there. This is going to be a general love reading for all signs. We're going to do a real quickie. And this quickie is going to be... I don't even know what yet, actually. I don't even know what extended we're doing. Are we doing extended? I mean, we usually try to, but I'm going to be honest with you. I was doing Zodiac readings. I'm doing personal readings. And then here we go. I just did Cancerian's reading. And it was all about Romeo and Juliet reuniting. But Romeo and Juliet are with different people in this lifetime. They're with the wrong one. And I'm not bullshitting you. It's the same energy I feel with this collective reading. If you are both single, here we go. If one of you is not single, okay. There's a feeling of Romeo and Juliet are supposed to be together again in this lifetime. But they're not. Whether it's because they're just both single and haven't met yet, doing their own thing, I don't fucking know. Or if it's because one of them are with someone else, they're with the wrong one. And Cancerians, or if you're connected to Cancerian energy, the reading was all about someone's with the wrong person. This, and you guys, and Cancerians know this in my readings. They always get the notebook energy of Lon versus Noah, always. So there's this really strong energy coming through of Lon versus Noah being with the wrong person. Why aren't these two together? Even if they're single, let's say two people are single. It's like, why are they not together? They're Romeo and Juliet. They're Lon versus Noah. So meaning it's Ali and Noah. Why are they not together? You do have in the near future. So something is changing here, shifting in the near future. And it does give me the feeling of... At that it's it's four of wands you see four of wands typically is with two people there's a couple in the card this one bitch this bitch is exact it's exactly the energy from the cancerian reading where it's all about finding yourself and the feminine found herself first and connected with her higher self first so this is being in union with herself okay four of wands union commitment she's in union with herself that you have found yourself, you've gone through your spiritual journey and enlightenment. And what's really crazy about this, and I keep talking about a storm brewing. If you follow me on Instagram, xi underscore missy underscore xi, I posted a video today, which is from the newer seasons of um, Grey's Anatomy, which I don't watch the newer seasons. I've seen all of the old ones. I have not caught up with the past, I don't know, like five years of the new Grey's Anatomy, right? Because you're talking this shit has been on forever. But it was a video where someone was confessing their love to Joe. And I keep telling you guys, and you see it in all of my readings, it's this nonstop energy of a confession coming. It blurt, it, someone's blurted out. It just comes out at the most inappropriate time. Or someone has to confess to someone, hey, I'm not in love with you anymore. Or hey, I am in love with you. However this is going to work. There's a storm brewing and we keep feeling that energy. It comes out all the time in my Crimson Secrets deck. <clears throat> storm brewing, storm brewing. And for a lot of people, the storm that's brewing is this confession. But I want you to look at this deck. This is my Edgar Allan Poe deck. You see how there's all these dark clouds like a storm's brewing. But look at the angels above. There are two angels whispering like this to each other. They actually look like they're twins, these angels. Um, this could be the Miriam. If you guys are familiar with the Miriam angels, they are the twin flame angels, but they are actually the angels that were in the tomb of Jesus, okay? So when Mary Magdalene went back to the tomb, she said, where the fuck is Jesus? She was like freaking out, right? What the fuck? Where the hell is he? And these, these, these twins, they said, bitch, he is risen. What does that mean he is risen? Found himself, right? Jesus' story is Jesus' story, but how does that relate to now? Because that means this masculine has risen up in vibration and energy. This is, for example, how when she meets Noah now, he is the ascended version of himself. He's built a house, he's doing great for himself, he's mature, he's become somebody. It is the same sort of analogy of 
when Jesus rose. It's a resurrection, but it's a resurrection also of rising up to become one with a higher self. Um, but it also is a resurrection of this connection and relationship. And it's very Romeo and Juliet. And it's very Lon and Noah and Allie. Okay, so for some, it could be three people involved. There's two and then one. And then for a lot of you, it's just both single. So getting back to this Edgar Allan Poe deck, which I, I try to use very sparingly. I'll use it sometimes on my lives on Instagram because you go down a fucking rabbit hole with Edgar Allan's Edgar Allan Poe's deck. They're beautiful, gorgeous, deep cards. Probably one of my favorite decks ever, but they're dark. They're a bit more darker energy, a little bit more malefic, even so, sort of. Not evil or anything, but you know what I mean. It's just dark. It's fucking Edgar Allan Poe. Like, hello. But in this case, these twin, these twin angels, possibly the Miriam, are whispering to each other and they're saying, she's ready. She's ready. She's found herself. She's ready. Where are they? Where is he? Because she's ready. Where's Romeo? Remember the card we had earlier in the near future? Well, would you look who's almost there? Motherfucking Romeo. See that? This card is called the World card in Edgar Allan Poe's deck. But what is so gorgeous about this card is it looks like there's this soldier or this warrior or this knight who is almost back home. He can see home right there. And he's almost there. But she's unaware of that so when we talk about in the near future in the near future someone's coming back home someone's coming home or there is this confession you know that's what we felt bottom of the uh, below that look the lovers see how these two fuckers are almost touching the lighting in the card indicates a subconscious dream state sort of an energy this is a, a dreaming of each other so in another consciousness in another dimension, they're together already. Why aren't we together in this life? You're the one for me. I'm the one for you. I'm Juliet. You're Romeo. I'm Ali. You're Noah. Why aren't we together? Well, because I had to find me first. You had to go find you first. You know, one of the most heart-wrenching things is meeting a person and knowing they're the right one but it's not but they're not but it's not that not of that version of themselves and not of that version of you the matured version of them the emotionally matured version of them the single version of them the awakened version of them you see what i'm saying it's the right motherfucker but not at that version of them this is them coming in at the right version of self at the right frequency emotionally mature mature it's financially secured no more baggage no more fucking silliness got all the shit out of their system right somebody here ran from their fucking demons they refuse to do the work so some of you may have been dealing with a person whether it's the masculine or the feminine they were running from their shit maybe what they were running from was the reality that they're with the wrong one Maybe they were running from the reality of I've got inner child fucking healing to do. I've got codependent tendencies I got to work on. I got to heal me. And, and they ran from that. How the fuck are you going to make a relationship with a coward? She's not a coward. She faced her shit head on. Look at her. She's ready. She's in union with self. So she's in union with self. And now they're in union with self because they're no longer doing this. They did this, had to fight their fucking war. Now they're ready to come home. So this, when we say in the near future, bitch, this is very soon. The Holy Grail. The one, the chalice of all chalices. They're in fucking love. This is love. And it's going to lead to commitment and it will lead to marriage, hand fasting, whatever is going to be your deal. 
And this leads to growing fucking old with someone because it's the right person. It's a reunion of old goddamn souls. Oh, my Lord. I should have known this was going to be some shit, man. Look at that. The fucking tower. Something's breaking. Some kind of very strong structure. This could be symbolic of a relationship. Something is cracking the fuck open because here's that blood red full moon. And that blood red full moon trumps it all. They're saying, I'm, this is not right and we're going to rearrange this shit. That's universal energy, the tower. The tower is this thing that comes that rips things apart. Or it makes creates endings because it's not what it's supposed to be. So the universe comes in and says, what the fuck is this shit? Why is this bit built like this? That's not what who it's supposed to be. A lawn is not supposed to be an alley. Uh, Romeo, why are you with that bitch, Susan? Uh, Julian, why are you with, with that motherfucker, Eric? Who the fuck are, what is this? It's like a weird alternate universe in these two people. And they're with the wrong fuckers. Now the universe is stepping in going, okay, all right, this was fun, this was great, but guess what? Destiny is going to come in right now and here we were fucking shit up. We're going to, this ain't it. And, and we gave you guys free will, so it's up to you what you guys want to do, but what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys what don't belong and it's up to you with what you want to do with the shit. Did I not say it's constantly screaming love confessions? Like that video of the guy screaming to Joe in Grey's Anatomy. I'm in love with you, Joe. I've always been in love with you. This is fucking Noah screaming to Ali. It's always you. It was never over. It was never over. It was always you. Intensity. Because it's like boiling. It's coming to a boiling point. It's... Dunant. Dun, 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 dun. It's very shark jaws. Why do I say that? Because it's like a lurking and it's like a like a boiling, a soft simmering, and then all of a sudden it's just like bo boiling so much that the lid is about to blow right off the pot. And imagine it's like a volcano ready to blow. The intensity of what they feel and the intensity of this love confession is just like that if you saw what i posted it was, it was so intense he was like screaming it oh my god ah! and what was fucking ironic is at the ending part of that video the, the clip from Grey's anatomy she tells him you dummy you dumb ass i love you too i love you too stupid Look at this, my coffee cup from earlier. Right? From this morning. But look what it says. True love never dies. No, it don't. No, the fuck it don't. There is going to be an intense love confession. I say it every goddamn day. I shuffle my crimson secret deck love confession. Love confession. Look, every fucking day I say it. Do you see how the cards sit in the near future? Some of you have already had this love confession, intoxicated. We had that earlier today as well, too, on my live on Instagram. Fucking divine masculine. Gee, I wonder who's going to confess. Gee, I wonder who's going to confess. It, this happens when they're older. Because I'm thinking of this energy of the intoxicated and it reminds me of alcohol. You know how alcohol is aged? There's something about that. It's like they're meant to be together at an older age, just like fucking Lon versus Noah, right? Lon kind of steps in when Allie's older, and that's because, you know, she's grown into this mature woman. But when Noah grows into this mature man, they're still a match. You see that? So there's this energy of almost this maturity, this ripening, this aging process 
that the two of you guys weren't meant to be together prior, you're meant to be together now. Now, if somebody's with another person, there's no sparks there like there is with these two. So for example, Romeo is with another person, Juliet's single. Romeo and his current partner, they don't have that kind of sparks like Romeo and Juliet has. See what I'm saying? There's no sparks somewhere. Free spirit. The energy is just so, the feminine is just kind of wild, the love offer. <sighs> love offer, love confession, intensity, divine masculine. Gee, I wonder how he's feeling. Fucking A. He's wondering, does she like me? Well, it's you, it's, 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 he, Noah don't know that Allie into him. Allie grew a huge fucking set and this bitch made a bold move and went to his goddamn house after she saw him in the newspaper. This bitch said, I'm gonna go and see his ass. See that kind of a big, bold move? It wasn't a confession. It wasn't a love offer. It was a goddamn step in the right direction that somebody needed to make. And she just felt guided to do it. She didn't know why. Melancholy. Someone's in a state of confusion. I don't know what to choose. I don't know what to do. If I'm with the wrong one, now I've got to tell them. Someone here is dreading that kind of a conversation. And here we have sexual encounter. Why do we keep doing separate off of Patreon erotic card, erotic readings? Because, well, first of all, because YouTube won't let me upload those kind of cards anymore. And I, I upload on YouTube to Patreon. But why are we doing those readings in general is my point. Because that energy is nonstop. There's a consummation that's coming. You guys, you know, back in the day, how people, it was kind of creepy actually. How when they would get married, they weren't technically married and sealed the deal until they consummated. And back in really old days, people would watch you consummate. Isn't that creepy? Just like old fuckers and random people in a bedroom watching to see if these two people consummate to say, okay, the marriage is official. Creepy as fuck. But honey, I mean, it's like modern day consummation without nobody being there but the two of you. My point here is, is that fast forward, such as like when Ali and Noah got together and had sex when they saw each other again as adults more mature it sealed the deal you see what i'm saying with this sexual energy it's a consummation it seals the deal it's it's one of the most sacred acts which is why sex is not supposed to just be casual um sex creates a life right it's it's the act of it it creates it, it'll it's there's a portal and the woman and you can actually create a new life and it's such a sacred huge thing it's a really big deal there's this sacred exchange via sex that happens between these two that just completely seals the deal and it makes it so that the bond is even stronger than it was before. Do you know what I mean? There's a really strong, deep sense here too of belonging. They, these two belong together and they feel it, they know it. They just know it, they know. Look at the bottom of this deck. Two of Cups. It just, it's just they know they're meant to be together. We're going to get into this extended. I assume that because it's that sexual energy and the consummation and sealing the deal, we'll do an extended with the sexual tarot magic deck cards. And that would mean that it's going to be on my website. So click below this video. The word more brings up that first link down there to my website, saltwaterhillstarot.com. It's going to take you to my website. You're going to go into the special love slash oracle reading section. And there you will find... Um, this video under what did I say special love slash oracle readings <sighs> oh 
you want to know why the consummation is just really important because I feel like you guys have already vowed to each other prior in another dimension in another lifetime so it's almost as if the two of you are already married does that make sense it's like this is just the physical bodies agreeing because the souls have already if, if, if you will body mind soul that's all this is all right, let's get into this in the extended. All right, you guys, thank you for your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions here on YouTube. For those of you that were asking, because I know people will message me what I'm drinking, it's this new drink that I came across. And, you know, tis the season, pumpkin season, but I'll share it with you guys. I tweaked it a little bit for my own personal taste, but it you this is how you order it. You order a triple blonde espresso on ice in a venti cup, two pumps of pumpkin sauce, two pumps of white mocha, you're going to do a splash of oat milk. That's what I did. It was traditionally a, a splash of half and half or heavy cream or whatever. But because I'm lactose intolerant, I'm trying to make it as, you know, non-dairy as possible. And so the oat milk in here is delicious. You can't even taste a difference. And then you top it off with pumpkin foam. And so, of course, I've been drinking it already. So the pumpkin foam sort of dissipated. And yes, it's very, very motherfucking sweet, but it's delicious. And I mean, it's delicious, okay? Not that expensive either. All right, I'll see you guys in the extended. Love you, bye.